I'm Diana File, and I'm a data scientist. And my goal is to tell you if you're developing an algorithm or a machine learning model or an AI model, how to tell if you're going into nefarious, unethical, sketchy territory. So remember when this happened, when there was a teenage girl who hadn't told anyone that she was pregnant and then her father found out because Target had kept sending her baby ads? Yeah, so I bet the person designing that algorithm didn't think this might have an impact on someone's life and might, life and might actually impact their privacy. Or much more recently, remember when AOC was made fun of because she said that algorithms can be racist and people said math can't be racist. Um, and then around the same time, Amazon released an AI model for just um, uh, helping people make hiring decisions, and it turned out they said never to hire women. Well, how could that happen? Could it possibly be because maybe only 10% of their workforce is women, and so some of the biases that are already exist in the world are encoded and amplified in our AI, AI models? Well, yeah, some of these things happen. And let's not be ignorant here. The goal here is that there are ways to tell if you're entering the sketch territory and to prevent that. So one of my big inspirations for this is this wonderful book by Kathy O'Neill called Weapons of Math Destruction. And her big message in the book is to think about impact. And she kind of has guidelines of how you can tell if your algorithm or if your machine learning or AI model is a weapon of math destruction. Uh, here's a, a, an example that she cites from this really wonderful article by ProPublica, which does a lot of public research in like things that people should care about. So um, there, there are these sentencing models that are actually used for sentencing. So what happens is there's an AI model that tells you what is the probability that someone is likely to commit a crime. And when someone commits a crime, they'll go in front of the judge, and the judge decides how long they'll spend in jail. And they actually use these models um, to determine that. And when ProPublica looked at what the impact of these models are, they found there was a bias. So out of the people that were labeled by the model high risk and therefore spent a lot of time in jail, actually uh, black people were twice as likely not to reoffend. Whereas out of the people that were labeled low risk, white people were way more likely to reoffend. And when um, ProPublica asked where this model came from, who created it, what's in there, they were not allowed to see it. Um, and we'll, so the next four points are um, ways that you can tell if your, your model seems shady. So this feels pretty shady, so what are other ways that we can tell that we're entering unethical territory? And this is all in that book by Kathy O'Neill. So dangerous model territory. The first thing is scale. So is does your model or algorithm have a significant impact on everyone's lives? So if my recommendation system is just determining whether to send me blue or pink earrings in my new shipment of my clothing, maybe that's not a huge impact. But if I'm deciding how long you'll spend in jail, that's a big impact on someone's life. And when you see that, you should start being careful about what your model is doing. So number two is fairness. Are there illegal or unjust factors used in decision making? So back to the sentencing example, there's a questionnaire that people have to fill out, and there, like, some of the questions are things like, um, do you have a family member with a criminal record? So here you have things that determine sentencing that are not about your actions and what you do, but they're about things that you can't change, like who your family is. And so that's another indicator that you're entering nefarious model territory. Next is opaqueness. So if the model is not open for review, no one can see it, that's another, um, that's not great. And so one example here is there's models used for a teacher assessment that have been used in DC to actually make firing decisions. And if a teacher gets a six one year out of 100, and then 96 out of 100 the next year, and they ask why, they're not told. And when a teacher is fired, they're not told why. And so here the model is opaque. It has a big impact on lives. That doesn't seem great. Um, and then the last one is no feedback loop. So there, there's no mechanism for improving the model over time and correcting for these weird decisions. That's also a problem. 
So the good news is that there's a lot more attention on these issues over the last few years. There is so much more research into bias in machine learning, into um, fairness, into um, dis not discoverability, into um, explainability of AI models. So like, why is it making a certain prediction? And there's even national conversations like the AOC situation about this. So I think um, there's only going to be more. And there's calls for um, a code of ethics for data scientists. So I think there's more awareness about these issues. And I'm very excited to see that. That's it. Thank you.